10 3GS tips. In this short video I'll show you 10 useful tips when using the 3GS library. Number 1. Using Scene Override Material. Did you know that the Scene class has a property Override Material? If this is set then all meshes will be rendered using this material. All the tips are available on CodePen. Here's a link to the collection. You'll find a link in the description. Click the 3GS Tips 1 and 2 pen. You can fork this to play with it yourself or export it as a zip file. Let's take a look at the JS code. Notice I'm using modules loaded in from unpackage.com. The latest 3GS examples use import maps allowing the developer to map a string to a URL and my tips use the same method. The relevant code for this tip starts at line 51. I create a mesh basic material. That's one that does not use lighting. The colour set to white and wireframe is true. I add a GUI using the Lil GUI library, a direct replacement to dat.gui. I add a GUI control for override material with a change event. I use this to toggle between assigning the mesh basic material or null to scene.override material. This can be handy when debugging your scenes. Number 2. Set a scene background colour. By default the scene background colour is black. If you use materials that rely on lights but forget to add a light you'll be faced with black. By setting a background colour you'll see a silhouette of your meshes. In the example I use the add colour method of the GUI class to add a control that allows us to update the scene background colour. Number 3. Set scene.environment. If you're using a mesh standard material with roughness not 1, then you need to set a scene environment to reflect. This applies to any objects loaded using the GLTF loader class, which uses mesh standard material. This set environment function shows one method. I use an RGBE loader for an HDR file and a PMREM generator. This class generates a pre-filtered, mip-mapped, radiance environment map PM REM, from a cube map environment texture. This allows different levels of blur to be quickly accessed based on material roughness. The loaders on load event uses the from equirectangular method the HDR is a spherical image map and this converts the rectangular image back into a sphere. Then we tidy up memory and set the scene.environment. Number 4. Render Output Encoding. If you use the GLTF loader class then make sure to set the Render Output Encoding property to 3.srgb encoding. The default is 3.linear encoding. And the GUI in this example lets you see the effect of changing between the two. <laughs> Number 5. Renderer dot physically correct lights. Again if you load models using the GLTF loader class then set renderer dot physically correct lights to true. The GUI in the example lets you see the effect. Number 6. Setting matrix auto update. If you have lots of static objects in your scene then you'll get a small performance boost by setting each mesh's matrix auto update property to false. Now the render method does not have to calculate the world matrix for these meshes. Number 7. Getting the bounds of an object. The box3 class has a great method for getting the access aligned bounds of an object. The minimum and maximum values of vertices in the X, Y and Z axes. The GUI get bounds function shows how. We create a box 3 then use the set from object method passing the object you're querying. The box 3 will then have its min and max set. In this function I use these to pass a string to an alert box. Number 8. Layers. If you have objects that need to be hidden and shown then layers are the way to go. You need to enable the layers for the camera and any lights.
then you use the layers property of an object 3D. This is the set method when you choose which layer this object applies to. Having done the setup you can use the camera layers property. The toddle method takes an index to the layer and toddles visibility on and off. 3GS supports 32 layers using the integer indices 0 to 31. Number 9. Simplify Modifier 3GS includes a Simplify Modifier class that will reduce the polygon count of a mesh. Unfortunately, currently this does not support textured objects. UV values are lost. In the example in the onload event, I create a clone of the loaded object. The original is stored as object.original and the clone as object.simple. Only the simple version is added to the scene. The GUI has a slider to choose from 0 to 0 0.9 in 0 0.1 steps. A change event calls the simplify function. Here we dispose of the simple object geometry, calculate the vertex count to reduce by, then set the new geometry using the simplify modifiers modify method. This takes two parameters, the source geometry and an integer value of the number of vertices to reduce the vertex count by. Nice! Number 10. And your last tip in this video is a battery saver on mobile devices. If your scene is static but uses orbit controls, then don't use a render loop where the scene will be rendered up to 60 times a second, which is very demanding on your processor unnecessarily. Instead, add an event listener to your Orbit Controls instance, detecting a change event, and use this to render your scene. Hope you enjoyed these tips. Have more to come. I create video courses and have several about 3GS. Check them out at nicklever.com forward slash courses.